รายการต่อไปนี้เป็นรายการทั่วไปสามารถรับชมได้ทุกวัยสนับสนุนโดยยูโรเค้กอร่อยทุกที่ทุกเวลาพรีเมียมเอาท์เลตแฟคทอรี่เอาท์เลตของแบรนด์เนมระดับพรีเมียมโดเนตป๊อบบีนเขียวมันหอมอร่อยริชาร์ดเลวส์บงคอกวิชสุดที่ใช้ยุน Good afternoon When he was a boy he wanted to be a politician so he studied sociology he came from A poor village from a poor family, or s u c h i a n Prefecture in Jiangsu Province. The parents were poor. He was doing farming, but he was very ambitious. The rest is history. Today we will talk about the present and the future with Richard Liu himself. Welcome, Richard Liu. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Richard Liu, founder and CEO of JD.com. I hope I was right in my facts about your life. Very right, definitely right. Thank you. <laughs> Just uh, said that uh, like uh, see a uh, very big movie. We found the one. We found the one in Hebei province, very close to Beijing. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, we found it, and then we cooperate with the local government, mm-hmm. the police station, mm-hmm. and then close the office and the warehouse. Mm-hmm. Take you know every goods mm-hmm. as a like a confidence, mm-hmm. and then we sue them. Mm-hmm. So they have to pay a lot of money to our platform and to the brand owners. Wow. Okay. So at last, that that company was done. Mm-hmm. That will send signals to other companies not to do this yes. to you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Richard Liu, Bangkok, which is the most famous. Zero, uh, one of the most uh, interesting or important uh, milestones for JD is the number 500. 500. JD is the first Chinese internet company to be on Fortune Global 500 list. When did that happen? Uh, I think on um, 2016. Mm-hmm. Last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This year we go forward. Mm-hmm. Last year we on the list is about uh, 300 something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. This year is 200. So you're going up in ranking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah about 100. Mm-hmm. In terms of sales, in terms of profit, in terms of revenue. Revenue. Yeah, revenue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My company, I don't want my company to be a profit driven company. Mm. It means I don't want my company to be only making money. Mm. Before making we, we should have making money because no money, no profit, we cannot alive. Mm-hmm. We cannot be sustainable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we cannot uh, take care of our uh, you know employees, mm-hmm. partners. Mm-hmm. But we should uh, contribute more and bring more value to the society mm-hmm. first and then make money. Mm-hmm. If we can get the two things together, that's our, you know, our goal, mm-hmm. our rules. Mm-hmm. So how long would it take you to be the top ten of for Forbes list of five hundred? Our target is within five years. We want to enter top fifty. Top fifty. 
top 50 in five years. Yes. Mm -hmm. You will come back here in five years. We will talk about it. Promise you. Promise <laughs> me. But the most important challenge is this number. Nine hundred million users soon. Is that possible? Um, I don't know. Soon means uh, months or years. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if uh, for years, I say yes. Yes. In uh, it's probably when we come to Thailand. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so Thailand will contribute to the nine hundred millions. But China has one point three billion people. Nine hundred million. It's almost 70% of the population. How can that happen? I think uh, every people will like uh, what kind of shopping way. First, uh, quality. Yes. And a reasonable price mm -hmm. and a best service. Mm -hmm. So if we can offer such kind of shopping experience, right. I think every consumer will love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, about five years ago, when I went back to my hometown, yes, I saw my mom still bought some goods from the offline from Off, Gochin stores. Offline, yes. So mm -hmm. I complained to my mom. Yes. I said, "Oh, mom, look at me! I worked so hard. Why didn't I buy goods from my company? You know." <laughs> yeah. So she said, "Yes, son, I love you, but..." I still love, you know, offline shopping. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, if you cannot convince your mother to buy online, how can you convince the rest of the country? Yes, that's, that's just uh, my point. <laughs> so yes. I said, oh, how can I serve 900 million consumers in China? Yeah, how? So from that day, our strategy in my company went to go for lower tier cities. Mm -hmm. We have a big plan. Mm -hmm. So from that year, we began to build more fulfillment centers mm -hmm. for lower tier cities. Mm -hmm. We began to enter even villages. That's mm -hmm. why today we have entered over 400,000 villages. Right. Just mm -hmm. because of my mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because of your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, things have changed a lot. Right. From two years ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, today, if, you, if I go... Like uh, just uh, two weeks ago, I went back to my hometown. Yes. I saw every, everything, including the fresh food. My mom will buy from, purchase from my company. Okay. So at least Not by force, you know. <laughs> no, she no. said, oh, it's real, real better. Yeah. Better. Now, <laughs> your, yeah. I know now your, yours is better. Yeah. So your mother has a mobile phone yes. to, to buy things online yes. now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before, if they have to operate a computer, mm -hmm. it looks more Complicated. Yeah. Them. Maybe it's very easy. Yeah. But uh, for all people, they think, oh, it's too complicated. Mm -hmm. For mobile phone, they think it's very easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your first mobile phone. My first mobile phone, I bought it uh, on my uh, junior. As a junior? As a junior. In the university? Yeah, university. Mm -hmm. uh, Motorola. Motorola. Exactly. I like don't a, think anyone of you here. Uh, is Remembers like Motorola. Big rock. Anyone here? Raise your hands if you know Motorola, the first. My God, so many hands. Oh. Old people. <laughs> like me. But you are, yeah, you were, you were what, 17, 18 years old? Uh, yeah, yeah, 18, 18. So 19. you decided to buy the first mobile phone. Why? Uh, first, uh, because uh, when I learned, the program by myself mm -hmm. and began make a lot of money mm -hmm. because at that time the software engineer is very few to find in China. Mm, yeah. So it's easy for any programmer to make money. Mm -hmm. So I just write some code for the uh, big companies All right. and uh, even universities. Mm -hmm. They pay me with uh, good money, very good money. Good money. Yeah. So I want to learn more. So I buy a computer first, and then buy a mobile phone. Mobile phone. Yeah, no. Iran is very expensive. Very expensive, and it's huge, and it's like uh, a bone, uh, you know, right? Uh, a uh, piece uh, of rock. I don't know how, rock, yeah. A piece, a piece of, of rock. A big rock. Yeah, yeah and you cannot just die, because the other end must also have a mobile phone. 
right? How do you can you call the number at home from your Motorola at that time? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, you could. But, but it's not digital. Not digital. Not yeah. digital. The voice is not clear. No. And uh, in most of the places, no signal. No signals. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that was your first investment. Yes. Into the digital business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now what? You can't say that. Now what is your mother's mobile phone? What brand? Oh, iPhone six. iPhone six. Yeah. Not a Chinese brand, huh? Uh, iPhone six. No, mm -hmm. I gave it to her as a gift. <laughs> it's a <laughs> gift. Uh, yeah. Huh? So now she is your salesman. She is the one to tell everyone in the village, buy online, buy JD, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of neighborhood come to my home and uh, learn by my mom how oh. to buy online. Uh, uh, I don't want to raise any farmer because mm -hmm. it's not good for both sides. Mm -hmm. Not good for me, not good for farmers, not good, even not good for the consumers. No. We want to do something different. Mm -hmm. We want to uh, build some fruits brand mm. in Thailand. Mm. Not uh, the Thai fruit fruits, you know, mm. in China, mm. but a uh, uh, Thai local brand fruits in China. Mm. So we can say on uh, much higher price. Richard Liu in Bangkok, which Suti Chai Yun. Richard Liu in Bangkok, which Suti Chai Yun. A lot of neighborhood come to my home and uh, learn by my mom how oh. to buy. Ah, <laughs> ah, perfect, perfect. But she refuses to live in Beijing with Richard. I know a secret. His father and mother were forced by Richard to come to live in Beijing. How long did they stay? Just over three weeks. Mm -hmm. But uh, they could not uh, bear anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, one morning, uh, I cannot uh, find my father. Mm -hmm. So my mom told her, your father went back home and uh, asked me, keep as a secret when you sleep. Don't tell you. <laughs> keep a secret. Keep it a secret. <laughs> yeah. So father just fled the sea. <laughs> father just went home. Because in Beijing, in big cities, they have no fans. Mm. They feel more alone. No friends, no fans, no neighborhood. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now they are living in your uh, original village, your hometown. No, not a village. No. Today in China, most of the village farmers has go to cities. Cities now. Only very a few, very old people and very young kids mm -hmm. still just mm -hmm. a few of them mm -hmm. live still live at the village. Mm -hmm. Most of the farmer has become, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the people are living in the city, cities. city dwellers, yeah. city dwellers. Yeah. Well, Richard Liu's mission this time is to come to Thailand, have a joint venture with the Central Group, and will bring JD's technology into Thailand. Of course, it is one of the biggest moves from outside. All the big giants are coming into Thailand. On September 19, I had the honor of visiting Richard in his office, and I interviewed him. But of course, one of the main questions is, why does ID choose to come to Thailand? And here's a short clip from Richard Lee's answer at that time. Why is Thailand attractive to you? Country with very nice people. Yes. And uh, have uh, uh, better annual income mm -hmm. versus any other South Asia country, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the consumer market is very strong. Yes. And also the e-commerce market is developing very fast recently. Yes. I think it's a very good opportunity and uh, time window fast. So Thailand, who, who told you, who convinced you to say you must come to Thailand? When did this idea take place? Myself.
yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Thailand was the first country when I go abroad, mm -hmm. when I go outside of China. Uh, first country? Yes. Right? How yeah, many yeah. years ago did you come to Thailand? Uh, I think 15. 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 and you came ago. to Thailand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, once I came here, I love this country mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. Just uh, as I said, people is so nice, mm -hmm. very, very friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole country is very beautiful, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, people always live in a very, very stable. Uh, I cannot. I don't know how to say English. Very rich mm -hmm. and a stable rich. Mm -hmm. The law environment, the investment mm -hmm. environment, mm -hmm. uh, everything is uh, very sustainable and a stable. stable yeah. and also uh, predictable. Mm -hmm. No major drastic changes, but yeah. you must also look at the business opportunities. How does Thailand offer you the kind of business opportunities that you want? I think uh, we have a lot of opportunity. First, mm. uh, as I said, uh, we have a lot of uh, very rich consumer here. Mm -hmm. Also, we can use Thailand as a South Asia center to center. cover any other mm -hmm. countries, including Yunnan and Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Myanmar, Viet, uh, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, second, uh, we found that the Thai food is so fantastic, so great, so good. Thai food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went to export a lot of Thai food, including from the uh, fruits and the seafood, and uh, garlic, and all kinds of food to China. Uh -huh. because, uh, as I know, every Chinese love Thai food right. very much. Mm -hmm. Thai mm -hmm. food is uh, up definitely the number one Asian food, just like uh, Japanese food, mm -hmm. similar mm -hmm. to Chinese. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one, I think uh, uh, in China, we spend uh, a lot of time and uh, invest a lot, of a lot of money. We have the best uh, logistic uh, technology yeah. globally. Uh, for Thailand, we just uh, want to make a four point zero. Thailand uh, four point zero, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, digital Thailand mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. So our technology can match this policy uh, very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So very good for us for today mm -hmm. to come here mm -hmm. to use our technology, our know-how. Mm -hmm to cooperate with a lot of partners, mm -hmm. and, uh, consumers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you plan to export Thai fruits into China, uh, I must tell you the story that uh, some Chinese merchants came to Thailand, to the northern part of Thailand, and bought up fruit plantations. They called it long, long meaning that they would Go to a farmer and say, I will buy up everything that you grow, and I will sell it. In the beginning, they will give good prices to attract the local farmers. But after a while, uh, the Chinese merchants will gang up and cut the price down. And by then, the Thai farmers would have no bargaining power because they will all come under this group of Chinese merchants. How can JD? help the Thai farmers of not being the victims of this kind of very bad practice? I hate it so much mm. because uh, I was a farmer before. Mm. I was so poor. My family was so poor. My grandmother has no any money to buy medicine even. Mm. Mm. Just because of those buyers squeezed us so much. Squeeze, right. That's yeah, the squeeze. word. Squeeze, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Today in China, the food industry has a very serious problem. The food is not a safety uh, anymore. Mm. Why? Also because of uh, the price war. The retail always launch the price war on the food like rice. Right. Like uh, one store have a rice board mm. on the gate of the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Another one have a lower one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but they have to make some money. So the only one way they have to squeeze the mm. farmers. Mm -hmm. The farmers have no profit. How they will do? Mm -hmm. They will use the cheapest 
materials, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So the food will become no safety, no mm -hmm. safe anymore. Mm -hmm. The whole circle was fall in the bad circle. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. For me, I want to, to do different uh, uh, business model. I don't want to squeeze any farmer. Because mm -hmm. it's not good for both sides. Mm -hmm. Not good for me, not good for farmers, not good, even not good for the consumers. No. We want to do something different. Mm -hmm. We want to uh, build some fruits brand mm -hmm. in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Not uh, the Thai fruit fruits, you know, to mm -hmm. China, mm -hmm. but a uh, uh, Thai local brand fruits to China. Mm -hmm. So we can say on uh, a much higher price. So mm -hmm. we don't need to squeeze our farmers. Mm -hmm. We can pay them on a very fair price mm -hmm. to let them make more money. Mm -hmm. So they will be happy and they will plant more better foods for us. Mm. That is very good news for Thailand. If you can come in here and you say that we are not going to squeeze the farmers and we will make sure that you produce quality products, we yes. will market it through JD's platforms at a price which is relatively higher than the market so that farmers will get more. Yes, mm -hmm. better quality, more money, mm -hmm. very simple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. So, but you have team up with uh, Central Group here in Thailand. Why did you pick Central? Oh, Central uh, obviously is uh, a very great company. Mm -hmm. They have exactly the same sense of value as my company. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we only sell some famous brands. We, have, we did a lot of research up on CG mm -hmm. and uh, no any complaints for their uh, products mm -hmm. quality mm -hmm. and uh, they have done business in this country for over 70 years right yeah mm -hmm. I also uh, want my company to do business globally for over 70 years or even 100 years mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. company can live over 70 years this can must be a very great company mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I think uh, also CG is the largest uh, retailer in Thailand and my company is all is also become the largest retailer in China, both mm -hmm. online and offline. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are not only a pure platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, CG is obviously our best partner, local partner. Mm, right. What then would you bring to Thailand and to Southeast Asia? What can G, uh, JD contribute? What new technology? What will be the value of JD for Thailand and Southeast Asia? I think, I, think we, I think you answered that question briefly yeah. during the interview. Yeah. Let's go to that first. Do you also plan to expand from Thailand to other ASEAN countries? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think uh, in the future, in South Asia, mm -hmm. we only have two main centers. Yes. First one in the Indonesia yes. to cover the island countries. Yes. And uh, second is Thailand mm -hmm. to cover the whole mainland countries. I see. Mm -hmm. So Thailand will become your hub. Yes. Mm -hmm. What will you bring to Thailand? What kind of activities? Uh, first one I think is our experience. Yes. Uh, we have done, you know, e-commerce business in China mm -hmm. from zero until today. Yes. So we have a lot of know-how, a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for Thailand. And the second, uh, in the past 13 years, we invested a huge money on technology. Yes. So we will bring our uh, the best and the new technology to Thailand, mm -hmm. like our paper-free mm -hmm. warehouse, like a drone, mm -hmm. like the last mile delivery robotic, mm -hmm. and the last our search system, mm -hmm. recommendations uh, system, big data, you know, mm -hmm. technology and the cloud computing technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every the latest technology we will bring to Thailand. Soon, very soon coming? Technology, the latest technology from JD to Thailand? Yes. It's partly for the uh, logistic fee. I think today Thailand looks uh, like uh, exactly like China, even today. Mm -hmm. In China, our logistic fee is still very high, mm -hmm. but uh, it uh, we are reducing it very quickly. Yeah. Now, uh, I can give you an example. 
if you bring a fresh food from a uh, very far away from you know this city, uh, a village, mm -hmm. take the food from the village to the big cities, it will cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Even expensive, then bring the food from here to China, to mm -hmm. Beijing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very so, expensive. Yeah, very expensive. So that's why a lot of farmers, they cannot make some money because the logistic fee is too high. Right. They have to pay a lot of money on the logistic. Mm. Um, so our technology can reduce the whole supply chain and the whole logistic fee uh, at least 70%. So if we can build a whole mm. system or find some local partner to cooperate with him mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. to build the whole logistic system, which can cover the whole South Asia countries, mm -hmm. and think uh, it will can reduce a lot of logistics. Mm, the cost will come down. Cost, yes. Mm -hmm. So you will bring all those technologies into Thailand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Including uh, automation, mm, no, uh, self drive, uh, self uh, drive cars, self driving cars, and all this. Including people free. Warehouse, it mm -hmm. means in the huge warehouse, no any people, no mm -hmm. any human work there. Mm -hmm. Including the self giant trucks, the drone, the people free delivery stations, mm -hmm. and the last mile delivery robotics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also asked Richard during the interview, what are JD's competitive strengths? What is it that JD has that others do not have? And here's his answer. We used to think that technology is expensive, but now you are saying that technology will reduce costs. Is it because of the scale or the volume that you can make use of? Because of the technology always keep developing, mm. like the battery technology, yes. like our drone efficiency. Yes. Yeah, every day it is uh, developing. Yes. So as our calculation, mm -hmm. I think uh, between the country uh, side and uh, the city downtown, mm -hmm. we can use the drone technology to reduce the delivery fee uh, about 70%. Uh -huh. yeah. And it's not too expensive? Uh, the, the machine itself is very expensive, sure. but the delivery cost is very low. So you think JD can beat other competitors with your technology you are you are confident yes mm -hmm. i'm quite uh because gd is the first e-commerce company or you can say the first retailer in china who built the logistic system mm -hmm. uh, 10 years ago nobody can could understand us no they always uh, you know uh said oh so stupid a strategy yeah you are doing uh, stupid things. Mm -hmm. Even your shareholders were saying that, why do you have to build all these warehouses? Yeah. Why do you have to invest all these things? You can rent them. You don't have to invest in all this. And it's going to cost money, and uh, your share price would not go up. It would only come down, right? Yeah, because too many people just want to do less work, more money. <laughs> but to me, I want to do more work, more money. Less work, more money against more work, more money. Which is more? Uh, of course, the first one will be more, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if I choose the second way, it can make me sleep well. Sleep, sleeping better. Yeah, because I feel I'm bringing more value. Yeah. Bring more value mm -hmm. to the society. Mm -hmm. And I also I make a lot of money, like I'm very rich today. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it can match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The money can match the value. Mm -hmm. Once they match together, it's right. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't match together, mm -hmm. like uh, you, you, you did uh, just uh, less work but uh, make a lot of money, mm -hmm. it's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not right. Mm -hmm. It's unfair. Yeah. So people are really receiving products from drones in China now? Uh, actually, no, not for the end users. The drone in China, we want to use to carry the goods, the parcels from the city to the countryside. Because in Ch most Chinese live in the uh, uh, apart apartments, yes, not in a house, right? Mm -hmm. So has no space for our junk mm -hmm. landing or taking off. Mm -hmm. So, but our junk can deliver the parcels from the city to the village, and then our you know 
part time job every month. Very well distributed the parcel. The last mile. Yeah, last mile. Mm -hmm. Richard leaves Bangkok, which is the first time he leaves. Richard leaves Bangkok, which is the first time he leaves. Can you imagine drones in Thailand delivering goods? Can you imagine that in Thailand very soon, Richard will bring his drones so that we can receive our goods, products by drones? If you don't believe it, look at this clip. It's happening in China already. The company's JDX Logistics Innovation Lab builds smart logistics platforms and develops drones, automatic warehouses, and driverless vehicles. It is also working to build three-tiered smart logistics networks, increase social logistics efficiency through smart technology, and provide the best purchasing experience to customers. JD.com is committed to creating value for society, helping top quality global brands, assisting supply-side reform, creating employment opportunities, and working to alleviate poverty among its many initiatives. So people are really receiving products from drones in China now? Uh, actually, no, not for the end users. The drone in China, we want to use to carry the goods, the parcels from city to countryside. And then because from the countryside by, yeah, by trucks, Beijing. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, because in Ch most China live in the uh, uh, apart apartments, yes, not in a house. Right. Mm -hmm. So has no space for our John mm -hmm. landing or taking off. Mm -hmm. So, but our John can deliver the parcels from the city to the village, and then our you know part time job delivery man will distribute the parcels. The last mile. Yeah, last mile. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but you are actually using drones now. Yes. Actually. Yes. How many drones do you have? In different uh, six provinces today, I think uh, we have at least over 100 mm -hmm, drones. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Over but, uh, 100. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, still on the test because the battery technology is not uh, uh, as good as we need. Yeah. Still need some time mm -hmm. to improve the battery technology. To research and develop yes. further. But the last mile delivery uh, robotic. Mm -hmm. It will come to the market very soon. Uh -huh. uh, we will have 100 in Beijing mm -hmm. for 100 universities. In those universities, we use the last mile delivery robotic to deliver the parcels. Robots. Or, yeah, robots. Mm -hmm. So it can come to the market very soon. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure next year our delivery robotic will come to Thailand. Next year, you will see JD robots. Yeah, in next Thailand. Year, yeah, next year. Mm, how would your robot look like? Um, more beautiful than the video. More beautiful <laughs> than this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very, quite exciting because I saw some of the drones in Richard's office in Beijing. And if these drones are used in Thailand, I think it would be a very big breakthrough. Of course, you talked about drones with the Prime Minister yesterday. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just uh, want to uh, apply some license mm -hmm. for us to test in some special area mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. make sure our technology is safe in this country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the most important element of Richard's new success is trust. When he was young and he started selling his products, computer components, on a small little four square meter stand in Beijing, he broke with existing rules. Because at that time, most Chinese merchants would be selling counterfeits, fake goods, and cheating the customers. Richard decided that he had to be different and he had to be honest. So he put price labels on the products for the first time in China. 
price tax. And then he declared very boldly that he would not sell counterfeits. He would not sell substandard products. Of course, the prices were higher than the other shops because those were real products. It is not easy to break with tradition, and I think it was a big risk. And I asked Richard about this. This trust culture, how did it happen? And can it be sustained? Look at this clip. You have uh, set up this very new culture where you say trust, integrity, mm -hmm. honesty to the customers are very important. Do the young people of China believe the same thing that you do? That integrity or trust, honesty are more important than money? This is the thing which makes me so exciting, mm -hmm. make me feel much better than before. Yes. Now, in China, more and more young people, they believe mm -hmm. they can use the legal way mm -hmm. to make money, to be successful. But if you look at 20 years ago or yeah. even 30 years ago, right. a lot of companies, they will do some greedy things, uh, illegal some things. They avoid paying taxes, yes. they yes. cheat, yes. right? And they... they counterfeits. Yes. yes, and they overprice the products, yes. right? Yes. They never deliver what they promise. Yes. Used to be. Yes, used to be. You are one of the first entrepreneurs in China to say, no, we are going to have a new culture. We are going to be honest. Yeah. We're going to be transparent. You can check the sources of all the products. Exactly. This is quite new. The young people of China now follow you in that more sense. More and more trust that. Mm. More and more believe and that. And they feel proud yeah, I, to yes. be working yes. in JD because they are honest. And people yeah. can say that I work for a company that, that believes in the principle of honesty. Yes, more than my company's success. Many years ago, People from Thailand went to China to buy iPhones. Maybe not a real one. Yeah, they knew it wasn't a real one. Okay. They knew they pay about 2,000 baht, 3,000 baht, and they got an iPhone from China, and they boast about it to friends. And then three months later, it was gone because you could not use it. That's, does it still happen today? I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, still happen today, mm. but not as much as before. Mm. Mm. Because uh, more and more people, the information is more transparency mm -hmm. versus before. Uh, or you can say a lot of consumer was educated mm -hmm. by the cheating. Mm -hmm. So the consumer became more smarter than before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they know which one is real, which one is not real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I talked to some of the young, your young staff members and they were proud. They were proud to be working for JD because the name JD means integrity, means trust. Mm. I think you have managed in the short 13 years of your company to create a new culture in, in China. Yeah, I think but how can you sustain it? Yeah, trust, I think, uh, uh, it's very important uh, to build the trust between your company and uh, your customers. But also, more important, is in your company, between the team members, the trust builders, even more important than, than, than mm -hmm. between the customers. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. our GV in Thailand, we have, uh, we give enough rights and power mm -hmm. for our local team. Mm -hmm. They don't need to report to me everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in, in my company, I never have any any signature on our for our purchase team. Mm -hmm. It means what how much they purchase from our suppliers. They don't need my approval. Mm -hmm. They don't need my signature. Mm -hmm. They can get the money from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Pay to our suppliers. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to believe they are honest too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have a whole system. The first one is culture. Mm -hmm. You must have uh, the best culture, mm -hmm. and the right culture. Mm -hmm. And the second is managing system. Mm -hmm. 
what is your advice to young Thai people listening to you or watching TV later of this program? They want to be Richard Liu number two. They want to be like you. They want to get rich. They want to get successful. What is your advice to young Thais? Never try to be another one. To be yourself. Don't be. Don't try to be Richard Liu. Not a. Uh, try. Not don't try to be another Richard Liu. Right. Yes. Be yourself. Be yourself. You are always uh, unique and the best one in the whole world. For for me, I never want to be another entrepreneurs like I. I never want to be a. Uh, uh, Bezos or Elon Musk or any or Bill Gates. No, no, no. I mm. just want to do Richard's beliefs mm. yeah. to be myself. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Mm -hmm. But how do young Thais get into the stage where they could be successful like you? Not necessarily be you, but like you. I'm sure some of them will surpass me, and I hope. Because the whole, if we look at the whole world, it must be young generation by young generation. Mm -hmm. The younger one be more successful than older generation. Mm -hmm. That will be benefit the whole world. Mm -hmm. That is the good thing, that's the good news. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, two points. First, hard working. Second, insisting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Insist. To do don't the right give, things. Don't give up. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry for my English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't think about money. Uh, you can think about money, but you shouldn't uh, spend uh, most time to think about the money. You don't think about money too often. You can spend one day to think about money. Mm -hmm. One day. I know over the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Last question, what is your next big dream? My next dream, of course, I want to do business here, mm -hmm. there, and also I want to do business globally, mm -hmm. in each country in the world. It's not because of money, still not because of money, mm -hmm. because of like, uh, uh, ability. Mm -hmm. Because if I can cooperate with different background, Different colors, different uh, you know law, mm -hmm. uh, cultural mm -hmm. environment, mm -hmm. people, and uh, get the best talents in the whole world. Mm -hmm. That will be my success. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. second, uh, sooner or later I will retire from my company. Yeah. But uh, I still have a lot of time. What mm -hmm. can I do? Mm -hmm. I should thinking to how to you know return my money back. Mm -hmm. Some area, mm -hmm. especially the education. As I said, I was a farmer before. Uh, on the primary school, here, here were fifty-five membership in my class. Fifty-five. Yeah, fifty-five, including me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because the education is was so poor, mm -hmm. so poor, only two, including me, only two come out from that kind of village. Only two Only out of two. fifty-five. Yeah. So the rest of our my partners, mm -hmm. you know, fellows, uh, still fifty-three, still live at the village. Mm -hmm. They have to do work in the factory. Mm -hmm. uh, still live in a very hard life. Mm -hmm. Not because they are not, they were not smart. Actually, they were so smart. Mm -hmm. they nice guys. Mm -hmm. They also have dream, mm -hmm. but they didn't get a fair education. All right. So when you retire, if you ever retire, what do you want to do? I want to every kids, every kids in the world can get a fair education. Maybe they cannot go to the university, mm -hmm. but at least they gave them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you want to retire? Another job. You could find another job. How old will you be when you will start thinking about retiring? But now I imagine about this topic, my wife was not happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife is not happy with you when you talk about retirement? Because uh, I want to retire as late as I could. Yeah, she wanted me to retire as, as soon as possible. <laughs> ah, so you must come to a compromise. 
compromise. compromise. Yeah, meaning to be in between, between early retirement and late retirement. Oh, yes. So where is the middle, middle, middle uh, point? Anyway, still very long time for me to think about. Still, I got enough time to make the final decision. Uh -huh. Maybe 20 years later, yes. we can come back here yes. and talk. Okay. 20 years from now, uh, Richard will be 63. And this is a secret because his age is not known in China. Only <laughs> we in Thailand know how, old, how young Richard is. How old I am. Uh, how young, how young Richard is. Let's give him a big, big hand for this great opportunity to answer our questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, by the way, Richard has a book which talks about his philosophy, some of the speeches he has made, some of the thoughts that he has given to his employees and friends. It's a book in Chinese. I have asked for permission from Richard to translate it into Thai. Do you want it? You want it in Thai? Please give it a big hand. And do I get your permission? To do and I buy free. Free for Thailand. So I will have it translated and I will put it so that a lot of people in Thailand can read about Richard Liu's thoughts and to follow his path to be a person of integrity, of honesty, and of trust. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you. Richard Liu, Bangkok, Rich Sutichai Yun.